just ask that as we spend time in your word this morning, that you would just speak to our hearts, that, Lord, we would come out of here with a joy in our heart, with a joy in our spirit, and that, Lord, we would leave our problems behind because we're, we're encountering just opportunity in the time with the Savior. We give you praise for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to take your seat. We're going to finish up 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, we started it last week, and I'm going to pick up verse 8. So, but that said, um, you know, this summer, Carl was on the boardwalk in Seaside Heights, and um, he had to use the bathroom, so he went into one of the public toilet areas, and they had the various stalls, and um, he sat down in the stall, and a voice in the next stall says, hi, how are you? <laughs> and Carl's not one to talk, usually when he goes in the restroom, so he was kind of embarrassed, and he says, I'm doing just fine, and the other person says, so what are you up to? And Carl says, this really is strange. I, I don't normally do this, but he says, I'm doing the same thing you are. I'm just sitting here. And at this point, he just wants to get out of there as fast as he can. And he, he hears another question. He says, um, the guy in the stall next to him says, I'm dying to come over and see you. How about we just sit around and chill? Carl's like, okay, this is too weird and creepy for me. I got to get out of here. And he says, um, no, I'm a little busy right now. And then he hears the person say, listen, I'll have to call you back. There's an idiot in the other stall who keeps answering all my questions. <laughs> so. so if you're in the bathroom and Carl's talking to you, you know why. So, um, so we're going to pick up verse 8. And, and I want to talk about this this morning. Look, you... If you're encountering things in your life today, if there's things that are problems, issues, financial, emotional, relationship, whatever they may be, the, the thing about God is this, is that he wants you to talk to that, him about those things. He doesn't want you to keep them to yourself. And God is patient. He's really patient. And it's funny because when you look at your life, sometimes you wonder where God's at, but God's always there. The problem is that we don't always acknowledge God. And whatever trials we have, you ever notice that when, when things are going bad, people talk to God? Yes. Right? Even when they curse, guess who they mention? Right? When they curse, they bring God up. Like, like you know, they can, be, they can tell me they're atheists, but when they curse, they use Jesus' name. Okay? Well, either you believe in them or don't. If you're going to curse and use his name, you've got to realize something. That curse word, right? It's telling you that you believe that at least he must have existed at one point, right? I, th I think it was funny. Years ago when I, was, um, when I was in school, in graduate school, there was a couple Muslim kids I went to school with, and they wanted to tell me, you know, what was wrong with my faith. And so they, they proceeded to give me a, a number of different things. And it was interesting because they, they took Josh McDowell's book, Evidence That Man's a Verdict, about Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection. And so they use some of the things that he brought up, and he addresses it, why he believes in the resurrection. Well, they were asking me some of the questions, and they said, you know, what do you think about this, and what do you think about that? And, and I said, look, I said, I can give you answer after, after answer after answer. I said, my faith has come because I've walked with God over the years, and when I walk with God, I've trusted God, and even when things didn't look good, I trusted that God would take care of me. Okay, so no matter what answer I give to you, you're not going to be happy with it because you're trying to disprove what I believe. I said, but my belief has come because I've trusted God. From the time that I said that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and I asked him to save me, he's been with me. Has I always felt like he's been with me? Ah, right? I mean, even when you're married, you always feel like the this, this spouse is always on your side. I mean, it doesn't always happen that way, but God is there. Even though it might not feel like it, look, the whole time I've been married, I know she's been there with me. But you know what? And you see this. What happens with God is look at how God looks at you. Look at how God thinks about you. God loves you. He loves you, okay? He loves you. I can remember the way my mom used to look at me when I was a kid and how she just loved me. That look. You know, you know when you would get home and mom would want to give you a kiss? Right? You get a, oh, look, yeah, she's over there hugging Nico. Come on, Nico, right? But you come home, and mom wants to give you a kiss, right? And mom gives you one of those big wet kisses, right? And you feel loved, 
You walk in the door and you feel like, how can you not feel love? Mom's going to give you a kiss and hug, right? Can't hear you. How can you not feel love? Right? When you get home, mom gives you a kiss. You should feel loved. Now, I, I'm watching Nico over there, and he's kind of sliding away. And, and I watched my brothers do that as we were growing up. When my mom would try to give us a kiss, you know, you would do the, the duck and hide type of thing and the move out of the way, right? But I look back on it and think, man, she really loved me because even when I didn't want to be kissed, she would still try and kiss me. Even when I didn't want to be hugged, she would still try and hug me. But you know what God is really good about? He waits on us. It's not about our timing, okay? He waits until we're ready to have that encounter with him. And it says here in verse 8, Now, dear friends, do not let this one thing escape your notice. Look at what Peter's saying. Don't let this slip your notice, okay? Understand something, that a single day is like a thousand years with the Lord, okay? I, I just want you to think about this for a second. Our time frame, we like things fast, do we not? And... I mean, Carl, you're probably the oldest person here, right? Most likely right now, Carl today is the oldest person here, okay? So he's, he's 90 years old. Now, is that going fast, Carl? Very fast. 90 years can go fast. I know my 58 have gone fast. When I look at things and you realize something, but a day is like a thousand years with the Lord. I, I want you to get to Peter saying what you, how you look at time isn't the way that God looks at time. Is God patient? Yes. See, realize, if we would realize that God's patience is so good and God's timing is not like ours, and every single day is a blessing, and, and don't miss this, a, a single day like a thousand years, you can make a day so incredibly good if you want to. You got that? Can't hear you. You can make the day good if you want the day to be good, right? Yes. But if you want to make it bad, guess what? And it can feel like a thousand years, right? A, thousand, a, a day can feel like it's never ending. You, you got this? But see, with God, here's how God is. God looks at things, and he takes us, and he wants the good days to last. So it has a single day is like a thousand years with the Lord, and a thousand years are like a single day. That God so treasures us. And see, time didn't start until he created us. God's always existed. So if a thousand years is like a day, think about this. Does God long to have you in his life? Can't hear you. Yes, he wants you around. He wants you to realize something. He loves having you around. Look, my mom has been gone now for about a year and a half. And I think about how fast that time's gone. I had her for all those years. And I thank God. See, I'm not upset because I've lost her. I'm now happy because I had the days I had with her. Are you treasuring the days that you have with the people around you right now? Can't hear you. Treasure them because realize something. They go fast, right? But you can make today last a long period of time, right? Especially if you're watching the Jets, right, Chris? That game can seem like it's taking forever, right? So, but as, as you sit here, one of the things that happens is we get our focus, and we can be so focused and wait for something. You know, it's the last, this month has been a wedding's month for me. <laughs> and it seems like one couple contacted me like two and a half years ago. Two and a half years. I can remember when they first started talking to me about it. I'm thinking, two and a half years is a long time away, right? And then it comes, and you, you remember how, much, how long you waited. Anybody ever really wait for something? When you wait, isn't it torture? Anybody like, raise your hand if you like wait. Anybody? That Mally went and boom. Nobody, nobody likes waiting. Isn't waiting fun? I can remember waiting for Christmas. Anybody wait, like to wait for Christmas and the presents? Anybody? Huh? Wasn't there a great thing about Christmas, Christmas Eve? Seeing all the presents there and your parents telling you a thousand times, no, you can't open anything, Right? But see, we don't like to wait. The reason we don't like to wait is because we want to know everything now. If I was to tell you everything that was going to happen in your, in your life now, would you really want to know that? Would you want to know all the bad things? You sure? But our, our young kids, a lot of times, they want to know, right? They're like, they're like, man, I just want to get... Look, if I knew some of the stuff that I would do as I got older, I wouldn't want to know it at 15 and 16. I was thinking about this the other day. There's times in your life that are really great, are there not? Yes. And do you enjoy those times? 
there was a time when I, I just got my driver's license. I had a 67 Mustang. I was working with my dad. I left school to go join him for, for work because our, our school was half-day sessions. So at noon, I got out of school. I grabbed something from McDonald's, and I'm driving down to Smithville where he was working. I was going to join him to work. And the windows were down. I had the radio on. I've got the steering wheel between my legs because I'm using my knees to drive as I'm eating. I'm driving down 561 to head towards Smithville, and it was a great, it's still to this day, it's one of the best memories I have, because it was, you're out, your hair is blown in the wind, and you're, have, you're 16, 17 years old, you're having a great time, right? And realize something, how many of those moments do you have in your life that you treasure, that you say, thank you, God, I had that time, because it goes fast, because you're going to be Carl one day, right, Carl? You know, Carl's encouragement now is to me. Wait until you get to my age and you'll see, okay? But realize, treasure those memories. One of the memories I treasure was his 90th birthday party. It was great to see Carl walk in and all that. But realize something. What do you do with today? Are you making today something that's really, really godly, something that you can enjoy, something that you'll remember, that you'll, you'll treasure that memory? Or are you just wasting the day to get to the next day? Because today is a gift. And if a thousand years is like a day to the Lord and a day like a thousand years, take today and treasure it because you can make today a memory that lasts for a long period of time. See, now what's interesting is he talks about this, and then he's going to move to a but. See, he's going to get to verse 9, and he's going to get to a but. Verse 9 has a but in it, okay? So when he gets to the but, and see, buts are always a problem here. So the Lord is not slow concerning his promise. See, we like to think that God takes his time. God doesn't take his time. He's patient with us. You got that? He's patient. I just want to make sure you get this. You ever sit in the light? And you want the light to change? And you ever notice that some lights, man, they just sit there. And Krista can tell you this. Certain lights I catch all the time. And you know what I say when I get that light? I hate that light. Okay? I hate this light. I, Krista can, how many times I say, Krista, I hate this light? Okay? I hate this light. I always catch this light. I hate this light. Okay? I hate this light. Okay? Every time, because I, I hate, and, and then it's almost like God teaches you patience. That light goes longer. And it reminds me of a thousand years being like a day. Because you get to the light and you're going, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one. And see, ride my bike, I've learned to count all the lights. So I can, I know how long most of the lights in this whole area are. Because when I get to them, I'm counting them down so I know how long they last. Okay? When a light trips me up because they've changed it, I hate that. But October 15th comes on the island, and guess what happens? What happens? Life, life becomes wonderful again. Everybody on the island is like, we don't have any stinking traffic lights, right? Life is like... We got two, yeah, but even then, most people don't even pay attention to them. So you've got this. But see, what God says here is he's not slow. See, we want to do everything quick. We want to move fast. We don't want to sit still. We want to go quick. I know. I like quick. I like fast. But he's saying he's not. God isn't slow. See, our God is not slow. He's perfect with his timing. He knows what you need when you need it. You might not like this, and you might not like God's timing, but remember something. He's not slow, especially concerning his promise, okay? He keeps his promise. Unlike every single person in this room, God keeps his promise. Anybody here not broken a promise? Every one of us has broken at least one promise, right? And the thing is, he says, look, but, see, here's the but, but is patient Towards who? Say, me. Okay, he's patient towards me. Because, I, I, look, I don't know. Do you struggle with impatience? Like, when, when you go out to eat, what, how long should you wait for a meal? Right? How long should you wait for a meal? And, and if you wait too long, then you can start to talk about the tip, right? Uh-oh. And we're, 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 you know, I wait. Uh, or, or refills for drinks. When we have soda, and I'm like, okay, come on. And you're looking. And the waitress sees right past you, and you're doing the, you know, right? We're, we're very impatient. You know how impatient we are as Americans? That when I was in Africa, and I took a group out to, they were, they, 
in Africa, when I took some of my friends to a restaurant, because they'd never been to a restaurant before, okay, first off, they didn't even know they could enter into the doorway. We went to a fast food place and go to the counter. I said, come on. And they're like standing at the door. No, 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 no. I said, yeah, come on. So we go to the counter. We went to Kentucky Fried Chicken, okay? Go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. They're standing outside. I said, hey, come on, come on. Come on, let's go in. Let's get it. So they, they walk there, and they're patient, and they're waiting. I said, you got to order something. Oh, okay. Americans, you know what we do? Are you, are you done ordering? Get out of the way, Right? Right? I mean, think about it, Americans. Think about how, how fast we want everything done. Are we patient about anything? I mean, even our TV, does it come on fast enough? Your computer, does it come on fast enough? Because I can remember when I was growing up and when I was in college. See, young kids won't remember this, but Windows, Windows 3.0, 3.1, the music. Ten minutes later, it would finally be up, right? Your phone. When you have your phone, how long can you wait for the signal to connect? Last night, we were in, in the hotel, and we're trying to get a signal and not getting a signal, so you can't get anything. Do you realize that we went from being plugged into everything to now everything's wireless? But we're still impatient. What amazes me is we are so impatient that we look at things and go, oh, it needs to be done now. But see, God's patient towards us. Aren't you glad that God's patient with you? See, aren't you glad that God doesn't have the same timing that you have? And it was funny. We were talking this morning about the clock and, and everything else. And um, we're at one of the churches I served in the past, they had a clock on the back wall for the pastor. So the pastor knew what time the service was supposed to be over. And I said to Tony, I said, it was the only clock that they made sure it worked all the time in the church. <laughs> the only one that I could see. And, and what happens is, yeah, they want to make sure, you know what? You got to be done. You got to be done right now. But think about this. God is patient towards you. He loves you so much. God's grace is so incredible. He wants you to know that he is not done with you yet. You got that? He loves you that much. But you know what we say? Oh, maybe I'm not worth it. Maybe God doesn't. Maybe God knows what I'm like. Maybe God doesn't really want me. And God says, uh-uh. Uh-uh. See, because if he can get that one day, it's like a thousand years to him. If he can get that one day where you love him back, that's like a thousand years to him. He wants you to love him back. Not because he forced you, but because he loves you. That he sent his one and only son to die for you, for your sins. He did that because he loves you. Isn't that incredible? See, Peter, Peter's bringing this all across. He says, because he does not wish for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Isn't that an incredible story? Think about this. He loves you so much, he's willing to take that one day, that special day, and say, man, it is an incredible day to me. You know, we all celebrate a birthday once a year, right? You know what that means? I just want you to think about this for a second. You know what, what a birthday means? That you've traveled completely around the sun once. You got that? Your birthday is marked, and what it means is you've traveled on this planet for a complete revolution around the sun. So at my age, I've almost made it to 59 times around the earth. Carl's made it to 90 plus, right? Think about that. That's what you're, what is, 90 trips? 90 trips. Carl, 90 trips. Has, have they all been wonderful trips? Sometimes, right? See, as you look at this, he doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants you to realize that you're special. The place that you live, where you're at today, God loves you. Look, I don't care what your past is. I don't care what's happened in, in, in all the things that might have messed up how your relationship with God is. Realize something about God. is God wants no one to perish. He wants you to come to repentance because he loves you. That's all he wants. See, the, and the sad thing is we want to argue with God at times. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord, see, now here's the big but. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And realize something. When thieves steal, are they, are they waiting for you to, to basically to say, come on in? No, you don't notice a thief, do you? They're there and gone that fast. The, thief, the day of the Lord and, and that God's judgment will come. 
it's going to come fast. And it says, the heavens will disappear. And listen to how he describes this. Peter's saying, when, when God's judgment hits the world, it's going to disappear. There's going to be horrific noises. It's kind of like in the fire. You ever put some big logs in the fire and they start to crack and hiss and make all that kind of noise? This is what he's talking about. What's going to happen here is it's going to hiss all because the nature of sin and all the things that are in this world are just going to melt away. He says, they're going to disappear. A horrific noise. Celestial bodies will melt away in a blaze and the earth and every deed done on it will be laid bare. Everything that you've ever done, God's going to make sure it's laid out there. So guess who you need? You need Jesus, right? Because the only way you're not going to be judged for all the things you did is because of the forgiveness of what God's done. But realize something. You look at it and say, well, how much time do we have left? How much time do we have left? How much in society here, what's, I mean, look at America. Is America in a great position right now? And, And realize some things. If I was a kid today, I'd pray for our kids. Our kids today have to realize something, that what we grew up in is a lot different than what they've grown up in. The rules that we had are a lot different. 9-11 changed things. Remember when 9-11 changed? You remember you used to go to the airport and you could watch the planes leave and you didn't have to get undressed? Remember that? You, you know, oh, look, man, watch the planes go for You could sit there all day if you wanted to. Now you, you can't even get into the airport. You can't even park out, out in front of the drop-off and take-off. If you stay there too long, they'll tow your car, right? See, they're in a different world today. Even communication, think about this. They grow up with this. They grow up with this. You realize this is always in their hands, always, okay? And if it's not, they're waiting for the next message, right? When I was driving my car, I was just telling you when I was 17 driving my car, we didn't have cell phones. I'm driving. One is, you're by yourself and you're free. Right? Nobody. I mean, hair blown, my hair blown in the wind, driving, listening, eating. I was like, man, this is great, right? Think about it. You can't go anywhere now with one of these and not have somebody know where you're at. It tracks you GPS-wise. Everybody, you, if you're carrying one of these, guess what? You can be tracked where you're at. See, think about this. The, the day's coming that God's going to lay everything you've ever done out there. Do you have Jesus Christ as your Savior? That's it. I mean, that's what you're looking at here. So he gets to verse 11, and he says here, I'm oh, sorry. It says, since all these things are to melt away in this matter, what sort of people must you be conducting your lives in holiness and go- godliness? You realize he's asking you a question here. If you know this stuff is going to happen, does it make a difference to you? See, you can't change your past, can you? You can't change your past. You're here today, right? And every, everything from here on out is the future. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Are you going to live it in a godly way? Or are you going to say, you know what? I give all abandon. You know what? I, I've given up. And he says, look, look at this. If God's judgment's coming, live your wet life in a way that has holiness and godliness in it. Encourage other people. Love other people. Enjoy life. Enjoy today. See, some people think that if they're miserable, that what's going to happen is they just might as well just live in that misery. God doesn't want you to be miserable. God never created us to be miserable. But sin and death came along. And sin and death aren't fun, are they? See, what's interesting is over the years I've been here, when I first started this church, I'd never done a funeral. Started here, never had to do a funeral. I did fun- I've done a lot of funerals since I've been here. But weddings, I've done a lot of weddings. Weddings are fun, okay? Because you get to deal with the couple, joke around everything. At funerals, not so much. Maybe Carl's, I'll joke a little bit. But, um, <laughs> but you know, over the years, I've had fun. I've had fun with that. So I want you to have fun at my funeral, okay? At my funeral, have fun. Laugh and joke and say, man, he really was a pain, okay? But, but realize something. Guess where I'm winding up? I'm winding up with Jesus. I've lived my whole life in expectation of seeing Jesus face to face, okay? And I'm I'm trying to live my life with a holiness and with a godliness because I I want God to be showing through me in the people that I come in contact with. That's what I want. But realize something. In our families, a lot of our families don't have believers in them. Guess where they're going to see faith from? 
They're going to see it in the way that you live. If you really believe that God says and does the things that he's going to do, you should live it, right? Our kids, our kids, look at the message that they're getting today. Shouldn't they have parents and family members around them that are godly? Shouldn't they? I mean, look, they don't care. Because when they go to school, I mean, look at schools today. I don't even know what pronoun you're supposed to have, right? When we, when we grew up, there was, there was rules for pronouns, right? Now they can, you know, I told you, my, pro, my favorite pronoun is, is basically, you know, I'm, I'm a child of the king or, you know, there's all kinds of different ones I've had. But when you look at this, you think, this is what our kids are encountering today. We, we should be that example. It goes on in verse 12. Wow. Waiting for the haste and waiting for it and hastening the coming day of God. See, he's asking, shouldn't you be this way? Shouldn't you be this way? Shouldn't you conduct yourself holy and godly if you know this day is coming? Because this day, the heavens will be burned up and dissolve, and the celestial bodies will melt away, away in a blaze. See, there's not going to be a flood. It's going to burn. It's going to burn. And you ever notice that when things burn, all that's left is that cinder and ash? And see, what God wants you to see here is that the sinful world that we live in is going to be destroyed so that you won't have to live in the pain anymore. You won't have to live in the suffering anymore. You won't have to worry about, look, we all make mistakes. Your mistakes are going to be crossed out. He's not going to bring them up ever again. They're done. Realize that. They're done. The mistakes that you're dealing with today, the things that you're living in today, the things that you're struggling with today, guess what God's going to do? Take them all away. Can you live in peace then? As you sit here, think about one person that you love that you haven't told them that you love lately. Okay? Just think about that. Take a, take a moment and think about that. Now, why haven't you told them that you love them? What's kept you from doing that? God, day in and day out, wants us to know that his love is there. This judgment's coming, absolutely. But God wants you to know that his love is there. God loves you so very much. When I was a kid, you know, one of the, the neat things was when my aunt would come over or one of my relatives would come over, especially, you ever have one of those relatives that wore the real red lipstick? Huh? And they give you that kiss? And not one kiss, but they give you on one cheek and the other cheek and then on the forehead, and then you spend the next half hour with the tissue paper trying to get all the kisses off and they make sure they go back in the bathroom one more time and do their lipstick and give you one more kiss right <laughs> and I, I can remember why does she do that okay and then what happened is you start to get older you realize you know what that person really loved you and that was their way of telling you they love you okay are you that kind of person are you making sure that people in your life know that you love them? Because realize something, this time is going fast. It may be a thousand years or but a day, and a day but a thousand years. You've got today. What are you doing with it? See, because the end is coming. At some point, and, and we may struggle with, oh, well, God hasn't come back yet. It's coming. God makes his promises, and he's not slow. Our God is not slow. It's going to happen. But are you making today the day to show your love, giving people the most of your love, the best of your love today? Are you doing that? Because I can't guarantee tomorrow. I don't know what tomorrow looks like, okay? But I know today, love people. Be the lipstick lady, okay? <laughs> love people, okay? Be that person that loves. See, because I think as you look at this and you see what Peter's saying, verse 13, he goes on and says, but according to his promise, we are waiting for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness truly resides. See, what Peter's saying is there's going to be a place. There's not going to be any more suffering, any more pain, and there will be justice. Because I don't understand why there isn't some justice in this world today. I see stuff happen. I don't understand it. The last couple of weddings I've done, Tiffany's parents, you know, her, her dad was killed and her stepmom were killed in a car accident back when she was 15 years old, and I just did her wedding last weekend. This weekend, I did Jeff and, and Melissa's, and his dad died of COVID about a year and a half ago. And you go, you know, why? Why does this stuff happen? Why? I, I, I don't always know the answer. All I know is that you have today. You make today. Just, just Don't go looking at the past and say, oh, okay. The past is over. 
God can deal with your past and forgive your past. Move forward. Make today a good day. Love people. Love people today. Realize we live in a culture that doesn't want to love. They want to argue and be angry. Walk out of here and love somebody. Tell people that you care about them, that you love them. Look, just show that. And he said, that's, that's what we're going to see with this new heaven and earth. And then he finishes with these last couple of verses. He said, therefore, dear friend, since you are waiting for these things, strive to be found at peace without spot or blemish when you come into his presence. So live today like you're living for God. You got that? Without spot and blemish. Stop picking on everybody else. Guess who you can work on? Yeah, work on me, right? Work on me. Look, I don't have enough time to work on me and my wife. Okay? I don't. Because if I did that, I wind up being too busy. Because I have enough of my own issues. And if I bring her issues into it, I don't have, I don't have enough hours, right? right? She's got issues too, right? Yeah, I know. You all got issues. Don't, you know, don't go, well, I don't pay your time. Yes, you do. If you came into church this morning and you're saying, I don't have issues, then you're lying. And you have an issue right there. Okay? If you're sitting there going, if your ego's going, not me, I'm perfect. Well, guess what? God will show you you're not perfect. You can walk out the door. He'll show you. Okay? You can, you can say, well, well, I'm okay. I'm all right the way I am. No, I'm not. I'm not okay the way I am. I can be bullheaded and stubborn and miserable and cranky and grumpy. Right? Yeah, not me. <laughs> And surely none of you over here, okay? And right, so as you see that, right, this group over here is the happy group, okay? So what happens is, what 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 happens is, is exactly it. What in our lives today? You're go, and before today's over, you're gonna find something to be cranky about. Are you gonna stay cranky, or are you gonna say, you know what? Nope, I'm not gonna let this make me miserable. I guarantee Satan's watching. See, Satan's listening. He's heard everything I've talked about this morning, and you're going to go, oh, no, I'm the good person. I'm the one that God really loves, so I'm going to be happy all day. Guarantee you get in the car, your phone will ring, something will happen, and you'll be miserable, okay? Or you're going to stay miserable. I know. I don't forget... Years ago, I guess I was 14 years old, I accepted Christ. I would go to this Baptist church on Sundays, and I was in a good mood. And this old lady who went to this church, every single Sunday, for some reason, she did not like the fact that I smiled. Okay? And she would walk up, and she goes, what's wrong with you today? I don't have any problems today. She goes, well, you should. <laughs> like, lady, I love you, too. Okay, love you too. Won't mention a name because I don't want anybody to be related to her. Somebody here might be related to her. Okay, but as you think about this, when you, when you come into church, you should encounter God's love, right? You should be able to, to enjoy it. See, you're going to take whatever you take out of here, whatever of God's love you take out of here, you're going to bring into the world. But if you're going to be miserable, don't tell them you go to this church, please. If you're going to go out of here and you're going to be miserable, tell people you go to cross the street, okay? <laughs> tell them... You know, St. Pa- and, and Padre Pio, okay? Make sure you tell them, you know, but, but don't tell them you go here. Real, walk out of here and go, man, I'm happy. I've got a God who loves me, and I know that my God is patient, and he's, he's not slow, and his promises he keeps. I know that about my God. So I don't want to go into this with a blemish. I don't look, I don't want to, I don't want to pick on everybody else. I want to be spotless, and I want to be without bl- blemish. But if I'm too busy looking at all of you, guess what? My time is, I'm never going to work on me, am I? Because I can always find something wrong with everybody else. And if you don't believe me, just turn on the news channels. You can watch Fox. You can watch CNN. You can watch MSNBC. You can watch ABC. You can watch NBC. You can watch all them and realize something. Everybody's upset with somebody, right? They're not telling you, hey, you know what? You're blessed. You're blessed. Think about this. If you want to enjoy today, just walk up to the beach. Right? After service, just go watch the waves for a couple minutes. Just think about that. You're, you're that close to the, to the ocean right now that you can give God praise because he created this huge body of water that just the waves keep crashing and crashing and crashing. And the smell is a nice smell. And the air feels good. And it tastes good to breathe, right? Man, you should walk out here. Man, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. See, work on you. Stop working on everybody else.
God can take care of the other people in your life. I know. If you pray for him, God can move. So he goes on. Verse, he goes on the next verse, and he says, verse 14. Um, for, sorry, verse 15. And regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So he says, look, if God is being patient with you, realize something. He's leading you towards salvation. He's making sure you're saved. God's patience as salvation, just as our dear brother Paul wrote to you according to wisdom, wisdom given to him. And then he's going to get into things. Here. He says, speaking of these things in all his letters, some things in these letters are hard to understand. Things the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they also do to the rest of the scriptures. He's saying Paul's words are scripture just like everything else that we have in our Bible. But what he's saying to you is, stop taking one thing and twist it. It should agree with God, what God says. Love one another, right? See, God told us he's love, and he says to love one another. Realize, you're going out in a world that doesn't love. They beep. They get upset for all kinds of reasons. People get mad for all kinds of stupid reasons. Think about this. You should be happy. Anybody, anybody going to go out of here and go get something to eat? You're going to get something to eat? Okay, you're going to eat, right? Have you thought what you're going to eat yet? No? Why not? Why haven't you thought about what you're going to eat? Food is, like, think about it. See, I, I, there's times where I'm sitting here in church, and I can think of, man, you know, I'd like a piece of chocolate cake. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to eat some chocolate cake. I'm going to go home and have some chocolate cake. That's, you know Why? Because chocolate cake tastes so good. When you go out to eat, you don't look at the menu and go, oh, 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 I'm going to order the most yucky thing on the menu, right? What do you look for? The thing that you like the best, right? Now realize something. Shouldn't that be how you deal with God and talk about God? The best things of God? That God loves you, he cares about you, he's encountering you, that he's blessed you that you can go out to eat, he's blessed you that you have the ability to walk, he's blessed you that you can enjoy these things. Shouldn't you go out of here and go, amen? Because your attitude is going to make up what your day is all about. See, today is the day of salvation. If you don't look at today as God blessed you, he's redeemed you, and he saved you, you're missing out who God is. And he goes, in verse, next verse, verse 17, it says, Therefore, dear, dear friends, since you've been forewarned, be on your guard that you do not get led astray by the error of unprincipled men, false teachers, and fall from your firm grasp on the truth. You can go out of here. You can either hold on to, to the fact that, you know what, you don't want to believe in God. I don't want anything to do with God. And realize something. You don't have, I'm, nobody's forcing you to believe in God. Nobody's saying you have to believe in God. But if you want happiness, if you want to have Joy, if you want to realize that God's able to do all things, guess what you're going to do? You're going to hold on to that. Because you may not be happy today, but the closer you get to God, you know what happens? The more you let go of the unhappiness and the easier it is to become happy. See, I thought about this. When I graduated from school, you have all these things that you want to be, all these things you want to do, how much money you're going to make. You want to be successful. You want to do all these things, right? Right? You want, and, and then you get older. And then you realize, you know what? You want to be happy. You want to have relationships. Because as much as money may be what the world talks about, the only time you're happy is when your relationships work well. Did you notice that? Because without a good relationship, you're not happy. You can have all the money in the world. Look at the movie stars. They have tons and tons of money, and they're not happy. They got people who wait on them hands and feet. Think about that. Imagine you get up in the morning, somebody cooks your breakfast. Somebody puts your clothes out. They wash your clothes, okay? They wipe your nose when your nose is a little snotty, okay? They do all that stuff for you, right? And you're still not happy, right? Still not happy because, you know what? This person doesn't love me the way I want them to love me. See, relationships matter so much. And first relationship should be with God. See, if you have a firm grip on that God loves you, you can hold on to that love and know that God will get you through today. Today is not going to be a bad day. Today is going to be a good day. And then he finishes with this. Verse 18, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the honor both now and on that eternal day. So he's saying here is, look, you know what? Realize it's God's grace that saved you. He did it. Jesus did it with him on the cross. That's it. 
So you go out of here today, and, and you can take whatever I've talked about and say, you know what, I'm going to love people, and I'm going to enjoy today. Or you can go out of here, and you can be miserable. And when you go out of here, and you're going to be miserable, realize something. Your misery will get worse. Because misery doesn't just stay at one level. Misery gets worse. Okay? And then it leads to things like depression and all kinds of other things. So if you want to be miserable and you want to have all this, yeah, be miserable. Be miserable. Okay? Christy can tell you, we were going across the bridge yesterday, and this guy, so if you ever see a Jersey elevator truck, I'm just warning you. We're riding on 35 to go across the bridge, and, and this guy chased us down 35 in this New Jer- Jersey elevator truck. I have no idea why. I watched didn't cut him off, didn't anything. But he got up alongside of us, and, and we, got to, as we got close to the bridge, and he had to make sure he got alongside of us so he could give me the finger. Okay? He chased us for miles to make sure he's beeping and chasing us. I'm like, I have no idea, but he's not happy with me. Okay? And he gets alongside of us, and I'm going, dude, I'm not going to be unhappy because you're miserable. I don't know why you're miserable, but, but then as soon as I did the wave to him and he got the chance to give me the finger, he drove slow and took his time going across the bridge. I'm like, imagine that you're so upset that you have to make sure that you get alongside me to give me the finger, and I don't care. Okay? Think about that. He was that mad. He had to, get, he had to go, eh. okay. I don't care. I said to him, I, I, I mouthed, I don't care. Okay? And I thought, that's how upset he was. Is that the person you want to be? That you want to be that person trying to kind of to make sure that you can give that person the finger. But you want to say, you know what? God, my God is good. I'm going to enjoy today. Because if you want to be that person that wants to give the other people the finger, I guarantee there's going to be a lot of other people you can give the finger to. Because people are going to make you upset. People do stupid stuff. Right? Anybody here ever do anything stupid? I've done stupid stuff, okay? I know I've done stupid stuff because people have told me that was stupid, okay? <laughs> so I know I've done stupid stuff. And the best thing is when somebody encourages you with th- those words, you can either take it personal or you say, you know what, God? God, you're working on me. You're getting me there, okay? Because, yeah, we do do stupid stuff, right? So don't be the guy in the, in the Jersey elevator truck. So when you see Jersey elevator, you're going to remember, that guy gives the finger, Okay? Be nice to that guy. Wave to him. When you see Jersey Elevator on, on like if you're standing on the sidewalk and he's driving, people start with, when you see Jersey Elevator, just start waving, okay? Because realize something. You might make his day a lot better, right? So I hope I made his day better by saying, I don't care. Yeah, I didn't want to do the kiss thing. I was like, you know what? Not going to bother me. I'm okay. And I thought about as, as we grow and we grow in the love of Christ, shouldn't we be people that have that love of God just come out of us in everything we do? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what a great and awesome God you are. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. And we pray that, Lord, we would truly be people that realize that a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. And that, Lord, you love us so much that you want us to be in your grip. That, Lord, you want us to show that love. May we encounter people today. May they experience the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, because they've encountered us. Lord, we just ask that you would use us. Use us mightily. Give us the strength, Lord, that when the challenges come, that we would stand firm and not complain and not gripe, but hold on to the love that God has for us. We thank you so much for today. This is your day, Lord, and we give you praise. In his name we pray. Amen. So, Dave, if you'll close in prayer, you got to give at least one person a hug this morning before you walk out of here. So you can do it now. So just give somebody a hug. So. Dave got fat. So. Uh, so I get you. <laughs> so let's close this morning, guys. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the, the blessings we've been given. We thank you for the love that we have. And Lord, we pray that we go out of here, that we would definitely just distribute love to the people around us. We thank you, Lord. What a great and awesome God you are. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, feel free to join us in the back. We have some coffee and cake and stuff back there. So thank you. <laughs>